Should you buy yourself a microscope from one of the four big microscope manufacturers or can you also buy a no-name microscope or one from a less known manufacturer? What's the better deal? Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk about that. Olympus, Nikon, Zeiss and Leica are the so-called big four microscope manufacturers. They have been around for quite a long time, uh, some of them almost 100 years. And uh, they produce very high quality microscopes that are quite expensive. Um, on the market, however, you can also find a very large number of less known microscope manufacturers or um, I would say maybe microscope dealers that simply rebrand a microscope um, that was manufactured. So they actually don't uh, make them themselves, but they actually buy the microscopes uh, um, and then they put on their own brand label on it and then they sell it. And of course, these microscopes are significantly cheaper. Um, but the question is now, is, uh, is it better to buy a, mo a, a more expensive branded microscope or is it fine if you also uh, buy a no-name microscope or one from a less known manufacturer? So in this video I'm going to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, both. So I've, I'd like to first talk um, about the advantages um, of uh, branded microscopes. The first um, advantage is, is that uh, microscopes uh, from the big four microscope manufacturers have a significantly higher resale value. So if you after a few years decide to give up your microscope hobby, um, then what you can do is you take your, uh, your microscope and you put it on eBay and yeah, and uh, then you can still get a decent uh, amount uh, of uh, money uh, for this uh, microscope. Um, if you go to eBay and you simply type in Olympus microscope or Nikon microscope, uh, Zeiss or Leica, um, you're going to discover that some of the used microscopes from these companies are quite, uh, quite can be quite expensive. Uh, so um, they can have a significantly uh, bigger resale value um, and uh, that means that uh, you get a quality device uh, which uh, retains its value um, even after it has been used for several years. Um, this also means that it is uh, worth uh, buying, uh, it can be worth uh, buying um, even a used branded microscope uh, and it still works very well and fine. The second uh, advantage of uh, branded microscopes are that they have uh, many um, accessories. Um, the companies uh, produce uh, for the research industry, uh, for research and for industry, also for education. And therefore, they have uh, microscopes uh, that are developed in such a way that many of the parts are interchangeable. And this means that uh, on the market, on the second-hand market, there are also many accessories available and also um, the company makes many accessories uh, new. Um, and uh, this means that uh, if you want to upgrade your microscope, uh, then this is uh, more easily possible could be more easily possible. Of course, it depends whether the microscope that you have uh, allows for that, um, but uh, generally that is uh, a big advantage of the many accessories that you can have. Um, while in the low-cost uh, microscopes, um, generally what you have to do is, is you have to kind of uh, resort on that what is simply available on the market, um, and uh, often these uh, certain adapters are not available um, or are missing and so on, because the manufacturers are simply too small and they don't manufacture all of those additional components specifically for this microscope. The third point is uh, rather obvious. Uh, the microscopes from branded microscope companies have uh, um, very uh, high uh, manufacturing, uh, uh, very high manufacturing quality. This means that the tolerances um, are very tight and narrow, and this means there's uh, no wiggling around. Um, so the manufacturing quality is very high. Um, it does not automatically mean that you always need a very high manufacturing quality in order to observe the environment. An amateur might not need that all the time. Uh, but especially uh, the branded microscopes are also used in quality checks and in research, in medicine even. And for that, uh, you need to have highly reliable devices that are uh, manufactured according to very small uh, narrow to tolerances. So there's absolutely no wiggling or anything like this. So that's another advantage. Um, and the quality of the no-name microscopes or of less known manufacturers um, can vary significantly more. Um, every device that you manufacture has a certain amount of, of tolerance uh, to it, uh, but the quality checks that are made for the branded microscopes are much more, uh, uh, much stricter. The fourth advantage, uh, though the companies uh, 
the well-known companies they have uh, their own service department and it is like this that uh, um, the certified uh, service personnel uh, will also fix your microscope um, and uh, maintain it uh, do some maintenance work like cleaning work re-oiling if necessary um, that is also a, a big advantage um, it, the thing is uh, for these microscopes actually it might actually pay off to do the, things like this if you have a relatively low cost microscope um, which I don't know cost costed only a, the fraction of the, the, the price um, if you simply do a maintenance on it you might as well buy yourself a new microscope already um, so that is uh, an issue for whether it's actually worth it uh, but uh, maintenance is, uh, is a critical thing and uh, in this case I just uh, also want to tell you a little story um, I recently had the opportunity to get uh, a used a th I think the microscope was 35 years old a used uh, Olympus microscope which has been used in education for many years and it was not usable anymore because the oil um, in the gearing system started to solidify so I called up a microscope uh, service uh, certified Olympus uh, service uh, pr uh, company um, and what they've done is the following they took it apart uh, they re-oiled it now it's as new okay and I paid 200 euros for that it's uh, somewhat more than, um, than, than 200 US dollars um, for that price you can already get yourself a new uh, no-name microscope but the Olympus microscope was of such high quality that it was actually paid off uh, to do the service on that okay and now basically for the next 50 years I can continue to use the microscope again so this this means uh, you see there is a, um, almost uh, um, no loss in, in microscope value if you maintain it properly. Well next advantage uh, branded microscopes uh, because they are manufactured so well uh, can have a very long lifespan. So in school for example where I work um, we've used the Olympus CHA series microscopes for over 30 years. Um, they've been around for that long and they were still functional and then when it was time to get them serviced we decided well we're just going to replace them they have been in operation for 30 years and we've replaced them with uh, no name microscopes and many of them already started to give out after three or four years um, so they started to, to yeah to break essentially okay um, so this means that uh, branded microscopes have a very um, long value uh, they retain their value and they can also retain functional and operational for a very long time yeah and then I'd like to talk uh, about a further um, advantage um, and uh, this advantage is, is that uh, those branded microscopes uh, because they're designing all of the optics uh, themselves and they're also manufacturing it themselves all the optics are um, um, adjusted to each other I just want to show this to you maybe using the uh, my microscope over here it is like this that the eyepieces here these are not just any any eyepieces but these are manufactured by Olympus and also the, the, um, the objective down here and every uh, objective has some certain lens errors aberrations you call them chromatic aberrations and spherical aberrations and so on uh, but because they are manufactured together they did the math and what happens is, is that the um, the lens errors that this objective makes are compensated and corrected to a certain extent by the eyepiece okay so they kind of co uh, cooperate in, in a no-name microscope um, this is not really done like this because you just have standard objectives you have standard eyepieces of the, maybe of different manufacturers they all magnify but they're not really uh, calculated to the extent that they actually also correct lens errors so you'll get a better image quality um, with a, a system like this however um, it doesn't mean that the image quality is not 10 times better I mean you would buy paying 10 times the price but it does not automatically mean that it's 10 times better you don't see 10 times more in other words okay so you see um, it depends a little bit uh, on what your requirements are and whether the specimens that you want to observe actually require this for general amateur use especially beginners um, it, I would say it's not necessary but uh, um, advanced amateurs and people have been working in research and say that they often say they see a big difference in, in, in quality between branded microscopes and and, uh, and very uh, low cost uh, no-name microscopes okay and uh, a last point that uh, came into my mind is a little bit more and more difficult to explain right now is, is the following that if you have certain advanced uh, microscopic techniques that you need um, then sometimes these techniques are not even available for less um, for no-name microscopes because they're simply not manufactured um, 
I'm thinking of, like, let's say, the DIC method, which is a differential interference contrast. It's a highly advanced method, quite expensive, which allows you to see the specimens almost in a three-dimensional way. At least it appears like this. It doesn't. It's not like in a stereo microscope where it is three-dimensional, stereoscopic, but it actually looks like like, like that. But and uh, this is a certain microscopic technique that uh, requires uh, certain filters and uh, certain um, additional devices that you attach to the microscope. Quite expensive, um, but uh, basically they are available. This, these things, to my knowledge, are mainly available only from the four, or mostly only from the four big microscope manufacturing companies. Um, so this is um, actually something that you might um, also consider. Other techniques that you want to use or intend to use in the future, um, are they actually available also for the microscope that I want to buy? And the four big microscope manufacturing companies, because they manufacture also for research primarily and medicine, they also um, offer these uh, advanced uh, microscopy techniques. So that basically were some advantages. I'd also like to talk about three disadvantages right now um, of uh, branded microscopes. And uh, one of the most uh, obvious disadvantages is, is that uh, they, ha they have an extremely high, uh, significantly higher cost. Um, so for the same features, you might have to calculate maybe about uh, five to six to seven, maybe even up to 10 times the cost. Um, again, it's a, a short story. Um, while you can buy yourself a very simple educational microscope, maybe a, a for around 200-250 euros, um, the Olympus, I, I got some information from the Olympus company. Uh, I'm not affiliated with them, it just happened to be Olympus uh, because I just wanted to know them uh, from them. Um, because my, my first microscope that I have over here is an Olympus microscope, so I wanted to ask them uh, what do the microscopes cost right now, because this one over here is 20 years old. And they sent me a pamphlet, a very nice pamphlet with a letter, a personalized letter, a, a name card from, from, from uh, the person I can contact. Yeah, and it was around uh, 900 euros, uh, and uh, it was uh, the most uh, entry-level, with three objectives only, uh, the most entry-level microscope uh, um, costed uh, 900 euros. Uh, it was an infinity, um, basically an infinity uh, microscope, um, and uh, they are quite expensive, okay? Um, top quality, no question, okay? Uh, and maybe if you are using them uh, for education uh, a lot and have it you to use, uh, you actually might need uh, this type of uh, quality, uh, but uh, that of course costs money. So yeah, the second one, the second point uh, of disadvantage that I already mentioned are the so-called infinity optics. And uh, this means that uh, these infinity optics, it's a new optical system which is uh, not compatible uh, to other microscope manufacturers. So the big four uh, companies, they all resorted uh, to uh, this uh, su uh, system and each company has its own uh, standard. Um, and uh, this is uh, basically simply means, I do not want to go into the technical details, that you cannot exchange infinity optics with, for example, uh, the so-called DIN 160 millimeter standard, which is the traditional standard. That is a, um, a disadvantage in the sense because uh, these infinity optics are very expensive and you cannot, e you, if you want see somewhere um, a low cost microscope and it has an objective that you really want, you cannot simply exchange it with uh, um, the infinity optics that the modern uh, microscopes uh, from the big four have. So in that sense you're limited, once you buy yourself um, a microscope from one of the big four, you're kind of buying yourself a little bit into the, in, into the standard, so to say. So, next one is uh, the availability. Um, it is like this, um, not a big disadvantage, but something that you uh, it might make it more difficult for, for people who are not experienced in buying microscopes or encountering. If you want to buy a microscope uh, and you want to start the hobby, what do you do? You go to Amazon or something like this, or to um, an, a microscope shop. You basically search for a microscope and then you can buy yourself a low-cost microscope over Amazon. It doesn't work like this uh, with uh, the big four. What you have to do is you have to directly contact the company. Um, they, I mean, I've seen a very few of those microscopes being sold over um, um, over Amazon, uh, but uh, no, but really not a lot. Uh, I think these must be some other people who've sold it in over Amazon. But if you want to get yourself a new one, uh, then uh, you either go to eBay and buy yourself a second-hand one, only if you're experienced. 
um, or you have to contact the company directly. And uh, this basically means that uh, the access uh, to microscopes is not as easy for beginners uh, because it's not as easy as just going to Amazon, typing it in, um, and searching for it, and you basically buy it over Amazon. You've got to contact the company directly, and then you're, they're already asking you what you want. Okay, we'll put the microscope together as you like it. So, what do you need? Which objectives do you want? Okay, and then as a beginner, you're actually sitting there and I don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit the thing that uh, that uh, is here. However, the advantage is, is if you have a a, a a dealer of a, one of the big four somewhere in the area that you where you're living, you can actually go there, and, and they actually might uh, take the time uh, to give you personal advice. That's actually the way that I did it when I bought this microscope here. Uh, I made an appointment uh, with uh, with the Olympus in this case, the Olympus uh, uh, microscope office, and I went there, and the guy actually spent uh, over an hour explaining to me, and I told him actually what I want and he put the microscope together okay so that is um, the, the availability and the access to the microscopes is a little bit different you got to be a little bit more experienced already so what is my advice um, overall um, should you buy yourself now a microscope from the big four or should you, should you rather buy yourself a no a significantly cheaper no-name microscope with the same features and the answer is the following, um, if this helps you a little bit, um, a branded microscope is a little bit, if you compare the Apple versus PC type of debate that's going on, um, it, it's a little bit like this. If you buy yourself a branded microscope, it's almost like buying an Apple computer, okay? Um, and if you buy yourself a no-name microscope, it's it's more like buying a, a PC, okay? Uh, that is, I don't know if this analogy helps, but I would also say that generally, um, I would probably as a beginner not buy a branded microscope uh, simply because of the high cost and because you don't know yet exactly of what you want. Okay, Buy yourself a low cost, not too low cost, but buy yourself a low cost microscope first, um, gain some experience with that and then later on after a year, two years and so on, if you discover that you're kind of uh, you want, uh, already meeting the limits of this microscope, then you can always upgrade and uh, buy yourself uh, a more expensive one. I would say that this is probably the best way of, uh, of approaching uh, the, the situation. Okay, uh, so this was it. I wish, uh, I wish you um, a nice day. Um, happy microscopy, happy micro hunting. I hope it was uh, useful for you. I also kindly like to ask you if you like this uh, video and if you want to keep yourself updated with other microscopy related videos, please uh, click the subscribe button below and uh, all the best and happy micro hunting.